Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Dima. Welcome to my channel. I'm starting a new series where I focus on companies, individuals, and facilities which are making a difference in their community. Today I am touring Yerba Buena, which is a cannabis cultivation facility outside of Portland, Oregon. I've been giving full access, so let's head inside and check it out. Yerba Buena is located just west of Portland in rural Washington County. The company's mission is focused on diversity, sustainability, and compliance. They are dedicated to supporting women and minorities in the cannabis industry, paying each employee a livable wage. Before we were allowed inside, we had to check in and suit up so as to not introduce any outside contaminants into the secured facility. Guys, this is Evan. So he's giving us a tour, run around of uh, Yerba Buena and what, you're the marketing manager for the facility? I also uh, help out with cultivation. Uh, when we uh, started the facility here, there was a lot of us uh, just doing everything. So it was, it was pretty much all hands on deck and I helped out with cultivation for quite a while until uh, recently and now I'm full-time marketing. What specific strains do you have uh, growing here? Uh, Corazon. Corazon super interesting. You were talking about medical. We'll see some of those in a minute in one of our bloom rooms. This is about a 19 20 to 1 CBD to THC. Wow. So this is a really high variety. Our highest test on this was almost 22 percent CBD. It was like one of the higher uh, higher percentage CBDs that are out there. Blue Dragon Desert Frost. This is another one of our uh, CBD varieties as well. And this is our Dosi Zone, which is a cross that we just started doing between our uh, Dosi Del, which is one of our popular uh, kind of high testing varieties. But when it grows, there's a little popcorn nudge, you know, was, there's was a bunch of them and it was it yielded enough to keep. But then we're like, well, you know, how can we get more, more volume to that? And then also crossing it with uh, the high CBD variety to give it more of, uh, we've been finding one-to-ones. People really like these one-to-ones. I like one-to-ones. Yeah. I mean, it's super popular. So they, you know, people want it. We're, we're, we're trying to provide it. And so that's that's one of the things that we're kind of focusing on right now is having, uh, you know, at least a third of our uh, crop being CBD variety because there's there's a lot of demand for it. Having like a variety that you can smoke, but also that people can then, we can send to extracts so people can make extracts with this, edibles with this. Creams. Yeah, yeah. CBD creams. Well, we've partnered with Empower. It's a company here in, in, in that does topicals in Oregon. And that's another thing that's nice about the uh, Oregon market, at least I've enjoyed about the Oregon market, is that there's a lot of good partnerships and cooperation, you know? We'll just stick our heads in here, not, not dwell too long, so I don't wanna. Yeah. This is one I'd, hopefully we can, uh... well this is probably one of the more important rooms in, the, in, 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 in our farm. Because this is, uh, this is, these are all the mothers. It's really important that we sprayed our, our feet down because these are the mothers. These are the main ones that produce the genetics that Yerba Buena uses. Correct. So we get clones from the veg plants when we top them and, and take branches off of that. But really, it, it starts here. And how long can a mother plant lifespan? Like in, a year? A in theory, harder. you can keep them alive for a long time, uh, but eventually they get tired and you don't get as good, a, good a plants off of them, so you have to keep redoing them all, you know? This is the bedroom here at Yerba Buena. We have a lot of strains out here, guys. I'm standing in one of this rows, and it's just surrounded by cannabis on all sides, and the smell is, smell is pretty amazing. I mean, it's just a, a variety of different smells from different strains, different terpenes, different properties of cannabis. Do you want to tell us what's going on in this room? This is the bedroom? This is, this, is the, this is our bedroom. But basically, after they become clones, then they come in here, uh, we start them off, put them in a little long gallon, so you can see. This is a mimosa. Which is a purple punch, and Clementine it's like a hybrid indica kind of a... It's a hybrid. The proper term maybe is cultivar, right? You... Cultivar. Oh no, and, and I've been doing my best to, to start saying cultivar and it, instead of strain, you know, uh, just because it doesn't refer to a, a, a plant. A plant, you know? yeah. It's a varietal, it's a cultivar, that kind of thing. So how many plants do we have in this room? Hey T, how many plants do we have about in the room? 1,500? 1,500, 1500. how many different strains approximately would we, would we see? Or... She, she would... Fifteen to thirty different strains. Some of, like she's saying, some of the stuff that's going to be for research. There's only one or two yeah. plants. Yeah. A lot of that comes down to what will we need. Yeah. You know, and one of the things about the plant is that the amount of time that it takes to grow the plant. You know, a couple of weeks in there. You know, a month or so in here. You know, the whole process takes a while. So by the time you know the sales department comes in, 
and says, hey, people are really wanting this. Yeah. I mean, it takes a while to turn that boat around. And get that up to production, testing, scale, right. and packaging. This is, uh, this is when they were transplanted. Transplanted. And, and so that was about a month after they were cut. And the way she has it all set up here is really nice. So this, the young stuff comes down here. And then as they're transplanting, because they're starting to transplant now, they're going to start pulling all of these plants over here out. And that clears off this space. Yeah. And then these plants over there. So the new stuff will come in. So it's, it's a really, they've really got dialed in. So I know your Babuena try to be as organic as possible. Right. Clean, green, certified. Yeah, we and can't. Certified kind. Correct. Um, what kind of preventative maintenance are you using here? We have an IPM program. So it, it, it varies depending on what we have. You know, no, we don't do any neem oil or anything like that. That's one thing. Very initially, I think we had, but we had gotten away from that really quickly. And so, yeah, it's just natural pests now. Yeah. You know, and trying to get uh, trying to get soil. So we'll do drenches of the soil for, with various uh, natural. It's more of like a uh, it, it infects mites, and so that kills the mite. Basically. Okay. Are, they, are these all kind of like hand watered right now at this stage? Yes. Yeah, so we don't have water. any, you know, no hand water. Systems, yeah. Are you guys uh, testing for terpenes here at Yerba Buena? Yes. I'm starting to understand that terpenes are a lot more important than uh, we've given them credit for initially. It's not mandated by the state, but you guys do prefer to test it yourself. Correct. And that's also the way the market's going. So if you go and look at, uh, I just got a couple of pre-rolls when I was downtown from a different farm, but they had um, their terpenes listed on their labels. And that's something we don't have. But that shows me that other co other companies are really starting to move that way, not just yeah. to have, have the test. If you want to see it, you can check it out online, but actually having it on the label. And this is something we're advertising. People are looking for high terpene percentages too. So it's not just THC anymore, which is kind of good. You want to give us a background on what's behind what are all these gallons for? Absolutely. So basically we're using a hybrid program right now of nutrients uh, including biobiz products, vital products, West Coast horticulture, and we kind of have found, picked and pieced together a nice little nutrient regimen. To supplement the nutrients, we also use compost teas. It kind of helps increase the microbial happenings in the soil. Every uh, input that we put into our soil, into um, any life stage of the plant has been green clean certified as well as kind certified. I think we're one of the only producers in the state that has both certifications and that's been one of our highest selling points. The nice thing about the compost is that actually has reduced our need to uh, rely on nutrients because what it does is it breaks down the different nutrient compositions in the soil and makes them more bioavailable to the plants. Yeah, this is our watering system over here. We have two uh, drip tanks and basically those feed automatic watering systems to each room. Uh, the manifold is designed to allow us to feed any of our four bloom rooms. Um, and then we also have a hand water tank over here for supplemental feedings for our compost teas. And it just really allows us to meet the needs of every plant at, at any given time. The hand water typically is better for our compost tea as well. Um, it's a little bit gentler on the biology. So we've kind of, again, found that nice balance between, you know, automation and doing things kind of quickly, you know, meeting that time scale need while at the same time individualizing the treatment that each plant gets. So we're in the flower room here at Yerba Buena. Uh, hopefully you guys can hear me because we got the fans going, everything's super loud and it's really orange because of the special light that we're using. Yeah, it's the HPS, uh, high pressure sodium bulbs. A lot of people are going to LEDs now. We'd like to. We just harvested a room. We've been uh, testing out LEDs in one of our rooms. All of the lights that were in our bedroom, those are our all um, LEDs. So what's the strain that we got here? Uh, this is neon lights. If you want to smell one, kind of grab it under these leaves like this. Yeah. So you're not actually touching the bud and then kind of, it kind of gives a little scoop. The hands get really resonant. Oh, I mean, it's it's instant. Yeah. Even it's touching instant. the stem, man, you'll, you'll get instant. sticky. So this is our CBD, this is the core zone. For years and years and years, everybody was growing for THC for that exact yeah. reason, because people wanted to get high, you know? Yeah. But now we're starting to learn more about it. So these varieties are out there. When, when we got those guys initially, we got them just to have variety. Yeah. And then as, we, as, as we've been going, we've been up for about three and a half years now, we're starting to see what the market wants. And so we're starting to grow more of it now. We had started as a medical facility. Uh, originally, when I first got here, we were harvesting our, the uh, our medical before any of this was built. And then we built all this stuff out and we we're providing for patients. You can hear people talk on TV all you want 
about, I don't know if it's medicinal, I don't know if it's this or that. And honestly, I'm not a doctor. I can't speak to any like specific medical condition this helps with, but I heard a lot of testimonials. You know, I heard a lot of firsthand accounts. I saw a lot of, a lot of improvement. And that's one of the problems with the research is that people are different. And so what works for one person won't work for somebody else. And everything is tagged, labeled, so you, when you scan a code, you're able to... Well, this might, get, might as well get a shot of one of these. Because this is, uh, at least for, this is important. This is uh, the tag. So every single plant over 24 inches is required to have this tag by the state. So they could come down and just hit it and make sure that every, every plant you say you have, you actually have, you know, so people don't divert it. Once everything's harvested, it comes into here. We're gonna close that behind us. Once we take it from this room, we put them in the bins, it goes in that room. But we have multiple rooms down at once, which actually makes it kind of interesting so you can see the different stages of dry. This is the Pennywise. I hung this up on Monday. You can kind of you can give a little squeeze. You kind of get an idea of what, you know. You gotta be careful not to uh, <laughs> disturb too much. Dre! Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Say hi. My name is Dima. Hi Dima. Dre? Dre. Dre, yeah. nice to meet you. Did you give them a lowdown? Everything is organized by section. What's what the numbers are, and then yeah. we'll have tape so we know what strains are where. And it's usually between, it could be between like a six to ten day dry process. Day. It matters on the size of the buds, how much leaf is on there. You did a light trim before you hung it up, right? Um, yeah, yeah, the cultivation staff will go in and they'll take off a lot of these bigger families. It does help with the drying process and the weight and with releasing all the chlorophyll that we don't need in the buds. To know when we are ready to pull it down, we will kind of do like a pinch test with the, with the buds. You can also tell with the snapping of the stick too. However, like the stick could dry and the flower part could not be as dry. So you have to really fill it out. We will let it sit. Usually the first 24 hours we'll, we'll let it sit overnight and then we'll check it in the morning and kind of do the same thing we'll feel it and if it feels wet we will have to burp it for a longer period of time we also don't want to lose the nose so if you over burp something which is leaving the bins open the, yeah. the oxygen will take away the nose you also don't want to flatten the buds too exactly they, yeah. when it's too much so we'll go and i'll create like a good airflow and kind of just stretch them out they will stay here you say for a couple weeks oh. yeah we kind of also go by the demand of the consumer so our cbds will will harvest dry it, and those usually get from or if we have new strains so we'll get those up on the floor, but we keep our inventory in check. So we always see our legacy strains, which are like one of our older strains that we've been carrying. See how much we need and we'll just kind of go with that. We run out of, we'll try to trim it. And then this is the cure. That's what she was talking about, about yeah. the, uh, her, the OCD thing. I was gonna show you this one, one of my favorite, one of my favorite at least to smell right now. This is our uh, purple punch. Purple punch. Mm. <laughs> it's uh, we were pheno hunting, so we had a two purple punch two, and our purple punch nine, and this is the one I think we're gonna end up going with. The two like kind of has a nose, well, like but like compared one, to that, it's like, like one point six pounds. <laughs> Look at that. Kind of. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's like grapey and yeah. like yeah. It's super awesome. So that's that's a good one. One of the things that we do too is we have little cards or whatever and explain each one. So we're trying to figure out what the nose on these are and you know write a fun little description, kind of like you would for wine or something like that. There's a it's called Phylos, um, is the uh, is a company and they do genetic testing so they can tell you exactly where your genetics are and so that's how we'll, that's how we'll know what is what to make sure it's exactly what people say it is because people like this is blue dream but then it's not really blue dream they're just saying that because that's what's selling that. There's super interesting what they're doing and they've created a whole galaxy of all the different so all the people in Oregon and, and different states send their stuff in and they create like these uh, genetic clusters and you can see kind of the family that you're in just yeah. like you would see like of any other animal or plant right. so they've done this company's done that and put it online for cannabis this is our fourth one and she is beautiful Corazon, and that's the CBD strain that you were mm -hmm. describing. Oh wow, that's good. That is. This that is, is one insane. of my favorites. This is. I love having her on the floor. The the trim material you make extracts out of that, right? Mm -hmm. um, extracts or pre-roll? Just whipping up some uh, mimosa. So mimosa number two. We got a nice large batch of that. You can see this is getting close to our final product for pre-rolls, but not quite there yet. I need to filter it out some more just to get some of these smaller pieces out that will create punctures. No stem, no bite, uh, no trim. Everything is 100% bite. Some of the best product to work with. Well, everything's uh, knocked in the cones. Yeah, the cones. And that's what this machine does right here. So, yeah, it works. 
this is a future roll up? And so basically we'd have the cones put in here and I'd then fill in the material into here, knock it in. This is to help with dust. And then after a series of rounds of uh, packing them down by the machine, after that we check uh, for weight, make sure that they're at least above par. And everything is uh, hand pressed and folded. Nice little container. I like the branding on it. Yeah, it's very, it's really uh, awesome because it's 100% recyclable as well. So we're trying to reduce our uh, carbon footprint and everything. had some outdoor plants that we were growing. Actually, so the soil house was our first harvest, and I got here right as we were cutting those final ones down. And then the next year, where these two buildings are, uh, we had a hoop house that was pretty much the size of one of these, and uh, we filled it with some plants, really just extra plants, mother plants, those kind of plants. And it did okay, and it was nice having outdoor plants. We didn't have our capacity here, so we were able to put some outside. But, you know, it really came down to the price of outdoor, yeah. you know? And it's like, it, it dropped so low, why do that? when we could just maximize our space inside. And so that's what we did. Summers up here are beautiful. We barely see a drop of rain from like July through September, really October a lot of years. We'll get a little rain in September, but everybody's harvesting about mid of October. As soon as you get to the end of September, it's hit or miss. And, and once, you, once the rains start, I mean, you're looking at mold problems, you're looking at all these other issues that high humidity will bring to you. Actually, since we're all out here, I actually want to ask you about the uh, energy efficiency of your buenas. I understand that they get uh, rebates from the Oregon Energy Commission. Correct. So one of the things that we done is uh, instead of switching out fluorescence in our bedroom to LEDs. That's why we originally got our um, rebate or whatever from, yeah. from, from the government. I heard that like 1% of the energy in California goes to cannabis production. Well, that's... I'm surprised it's not bigger. I'll be honest. <laughs> yeah. 1% in the United States, 3% in California. Okay, 3% in California. 2, point, 2 million cars. Equivalent of 2 million cars cannabis cultivation. That is really crazy when you yeah. think about it. Just the size of, you know, what goes into growing yeah. cannabis that we all use, you know, medicinally, recreationally, and it's a big market. Like where we come from, we don't have a huge market like that. Evan, thanks so much for showing us around. Uh, this has been really educational. I hope it's been, you know, educational for the audience as well that sees what Yerba Boy knows about and also what the cannabis industry has uh, in store for the future for everything, you know, for every state, not just Oregon, but other other states as well in the United States and countries too, as, as they legalize and come further online. I hope so too. Um, you know, one, education's probably one of the best things. There's a lot of people who are uneducated about the plant, about the industry, or maybe you're just holding on to some old stigmas uh, that, that are still around. And anything we can do to um, you know, be, as, be in compliance, be clean, be environmentally friendly, but also friendly to our neighbors and everybody else, and make sure that people realize that this, this, is, this is an industry that could help. Yeah. You know, it could help people, it could help uh, communities. Yeah, that's great. Awesome, thanks again so much. Hey, Appreciate you're it. You're very welcome. Thank you guys for coming. Appreciate it. Take Thank care, you. Man.